James Sillens, the Vice President for Technical Account Management with South Asia. Thanks for joining us on our Tech and Sec Weekly. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Chris. Great to be here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, the Vice President Technical Account Management is very broad uh, in yeah. terms of a, a term, and you've got South Asia uh, as your remit. Maybe yeah. introduce us to Tanium. We're going to be talking about uh, converged endpoint management uh, as well. But yeah, yeah, introduce us to your role at Tanium and also a bit about uh, your role in Asia as well. Yeah, so I'll, I'll park the introduction to Tanium just for a second because that's kind of a, a, a bit of a long discussion. But um, so my role, uh, as you rightly say, is, is leading the technical account management uh, team here in South Asia. And that's kind of a bit of a meaningless title in some respects. Um, uh, but my team look after our customers and our customer success really from cradle to grave. Uh, so where traditionally vendors have a pre-sales team and a post-sales team, yeah. um, for us, that's kind of uh, melded into, into one personality. Mm -hmm. And so my team kind of look after our customers right from the early discussions around products through to supporting them in implementation and then even into uh, break fix support. So it's kind of a right. broad title because it's a very broad role. Yeah, so I was going to ask you which side you're on, sort of pre or post customer, but that's a good thing, I suppose, and that's part of the issues with endpoint management anyway, isn't it? In terms yeah. of, it, it's relatively complex or a bit of a challenge if you're not uh, working with a partner and a, and a key stakeholder. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think one of the things that really impressed me with Tanium, and I'll talk a little bit more about the technology as we go through, but they tend to do everything slightly different to most vendors in this space. And I think the thing that our customers love about the technical account management role is that the person that sells them the stuff is the person that's going to support them. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, the endpoint space is immensely complicated. There are so many moving parts. There are so many products and technologies that make up the endpoint these days, uh, you know, that it's a, it's overwhelming for a lot of customers. So to have somebody who can really understand their environment, really understand the product and be able to help them implement and then, uh, you know, go break fix is just so valuable, I think. Well, maybe talk us through converged endpoint management or XEM. Yeah. Uh, you've, got a, you've got a platform for this, but the converged aspect of monitoring uh, for the endpoint. Maybe just talk us through some of the key trends in this area and, and, yeah. and what, what the expectations should be for the customer. Look, look, if you don't mind, if you'll indulge me just for a second, I'd probably want to take a step back before we even start talking about what the platform looks like. It's kind of under, worth understanding um, you know, where our roots are in terms of what our founders try to do and, and some of the fundamentals that they try to solve. because. Uh, this space is very crowded, as you know. There are a gazillion products that you can have on your endpoint, yeah. and uh, and they've all got kind of similar fault lines, if you like. And and I, I kind of want to give you an idea about why Tanium is different. So, uh, one of the one of the challenges that our founder, the fundamental challenges that our founders wanted to, to address, was this idea of speed and scale, and break the relationship, the linear relationship between the number of endpoints you have under management and the number of servers you need to support that system. Because that's the killer in this space. When you've got you know, 10,000, 100,000, 600,000 endpoints, suddenly the management platform for that just starts to explode in yeah. terms of um, complexity. So that was the first thing that um, David and Orion Hindawi wanted to address. Um, and so if you think about a traditional system, you have you know, a central server and connected to the endpoints and you know, that traditional hub spoke kind of architecture, what we'd call a centralized network. Um, and of course, that scales to a point. You've got, you know, a lot of endpoints around the edge, and then the central service says, "Oh, actually, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I, I've got to give up because you're just adding too many, too many endpoints." And so at that point, you think, oh, "Okay, well, how do we, how do we fix this?" And so a lot of traditional technologies have fixed that by adding tier two distribution relay service, whatever you want to call it. So you've now got this hierarchy, you've got a tier one server, you've got a tier two server, and the tier two server looks after um, after the endpoints. And so every thousand endpoints or so, you need to add another tier two server, or you need to add a, a, tier, a tier two server when you go to a branch office or something like that. So you've now created this linear relationship between the number of endpoints you have under management and the number of servers you need. You've introduced points of failure, you've introduced latency, massive cost, uh, massive management overhead just on your management platform. Yeah. And so that was the first fundamental that David and Orion wanted to solve. And they did this by 
kind of breaking that hub spoke architecture and actually having spokes that ran from endpoint to endpoint as well. So now you've got this decentralized network. So every endpoint under management now becomes part, a little part of, of the system itself. So the great thing about this is that performance scales linearly. You yeah. don't need to add dozens of servers. In fact, you can run Tanium from literally two servers up to a million endpoints or more, you know? And so that was the first fundamental that they wanted to fix. Ultimately, um, you know, when you break Tanium down to its real roots, it's an amazingly efficient communications platform. It allows us to talk to endpoints at scale within seconds. And so that's the, the roots of, of, of our platform. So the second fundamental that they wanted to solve for was location independence. It's kind of crazy in today's world that when you take your laptop off the domain, go home, uh, suddenly your uh, company has lost visibility and control of that endpoint. But that's the situation a yeah. lot of customers face today. So as far as, far as we're concerned, as long as you've got an IP address and you're connected to the internet, you're still completely managed. We can see your endpoint, we can check it for vulnerabilities, we can patch it, we can deploy software, all those good things that come with, uh, with, a, with a management platform. So those are the two things that our founders really wanted to solve for. Um, and then everything else becomes easy. Once you can talk to an endpoint and get uh, real-time information within seconds, patching, software deployment, threat response, uh, you know, uh, sensitive data discovery, file integrity monitoring, all of those uh, yeah. you know, features and functions become kind of the easy part because you've done all the hard work. In and the you've network. got a direct link back to that, that uh, endpoint or yeah. device, whatever that might be. Yeah. How much uh, automation is in this, including detection of the endpoint coming online? Yeah, yeah. How much? How much automation has has been built in, or or is that still part of the sort of the development life cycle underway? I think I think automation is one of the things that will always be under development. You know, you're yeah. you're never going to get to the end of that rainbow, unfortunately. Um, but of course, you know, a lot of what we do isn't. <laughs> isn't a workflow, it's just functionality within the platform. So, so asset discovery, for example, and that's a real, really critical piece to understanding your security posture is understanding what assets you have. You know, because I think it's 70% of organizations uh, say that their breach occurred from an asset that they didn't know about. Yeah, That's kind of scary, isn't it? You know, you've got so many organizations who've got assets they don't even know that they're there. So they're not patching them. They're not including them in their security posture. Um, and so that's where that's where the trouble starts. Right at the bit, bottom of this layer is the visibility piece. Yeah. And so for us, understanding what's on your network, every endpoint under management now becomes a mini scanner. So we can see exactly what's around that endpoint. We can find all those you know, VMs that have been spun up for three years that nobody's remembered. Um, and we can alert to those, we can, uh, we can uh, categorize them and ultimately bring them under management. Maybe talk us through Tanium risk assessment and benchmark yeah, uh, and how that applies. So, you know, I thought you, you kind of asked me a bit about um, XEM or converged endpoint management. Yeah. I think, you know, you can, you can see where we're going with this story, right? You know, so uh, it's kind of, again, crazy in today's world that we treat op IT operations and IT security and IT risk, for that matter, um, separately. And, and we've got separate tools for each of those. And so once you can touch every endpoint, once you can literally ask any question of that endpoint that you care to ask, you're only really restricted by your own imagination. Now you can start doing some really nice things around risk. You can say things like, well, when was the last time you were patched? How many critical patches have you got missing? Um, what's the configuration drift away from our current benchmark? Um, how many vulnerabilities are exposed? All those kind of questions. Um, what sensitive data are you storing? Is your disk encrypted or not? Have you enabled and turned on uh, Windows Defender? And I can ask those questions in seconds and get response back from 600,000 endpoints or more. Yeah. Um, and so once you can get those metrics, you can now start building a dynamic picture of your risk. Um, and, and I mean dynamic, you know, this, this risk dashboard can be updated literally on a minute by minute, hour by hour basis. Um, and so suddenly you've got much better understanding of your digital risk of your business. I think traditionally organizations, especially in the FSI space, the healthcare space, really good at understanding business risk really poor at understanding digital risk yeah. because they're still using the technologies 
um, you know, like questionnaires and, and static uh, stuff like that. Now you can give them a dynamic feed to say, this is what your risk profile looks like and update that, that, that dashboard instantly. So that's what the uh, risk assessment is all about. It's about understanding, uh, you know, your digital risk, uh, understanding your critical, uh, uh, you know, your critical assets uh, and the impact of those critical assets going down and, and kind of the vulnerability of those assets. And as, I suppose a key aspect of that, particularly for businesses, is you're, you're a Microsoft partner now. Yeah. So how, how does that potentially change, you know, given most enterprise uh, or a lot of enterprise are using Microsoft platform uh, and related devices as well? How, does it have a big impact for you? Yeah, it does, actually. And look, you know, I think every vendor on the planet wants to be friendly with Microsoft because, of course, <laughs> Microsoft... Uh, you know, uh, dominant in 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 that space. Okay, so you'd be kind of crazy if you didn't have yeah. a better together story with with Microsoft. And look, that for us has been running for for a long time. Really, again, since the roots of uh, of developing the um, the platform. Um, so at a at a very base level, uh, we do things for the Microsoft environment that they struggle to do themselves. Uh, no disrespect for, to our Microsoft friends, but you know, AppLocker is not the friendliest thing to configure from uh, from group policy, yeah. nor is BitLocker, nor is Windows Defender. So if you can manage those products in a Windows environment at scale, set policy for AppLocker, set policy for Windows Defender and BitLocker, and then be able to report when you've got policy breaches, i.e. endpoints that don't conform to your policy, it makes that whole environment much easier to manage. So at one level, we are adding a layer of management across the Microsoft product suite and giving you the tools that you need to manage that space. But we've kind of taken it a step further. So, you know, the partnership that we announced fairly recently really is around Sentinel. Uh, you know, Sentinel, Sentinel has been amazingly successful, very early, uh, you know, very late player in the same space and yet has taken off and is now one of the leaders uh, in that um, security information space. And so for us, it's about, well, how can we add value to that? You know, you've got all this rich security data going into a, you know, massive uh, data lake with great analytics across the top. So how do we bring an endpoint uh, context to that information yeah. so we can help prioritize security eyes in that platform and swap and stop this kind of context switching? Um, so, yeah, all that endpoint uh, context is pulled into Sentinel and you can uh, you know, you can see which your critical assets are. You can now start taking actions from Sentinel using the Tanium API. So maybe you want a quarantine a machine. Maybe you want a patch machine. Maybe you just want to say to a machine, tell me what your latest um, configuration looks like and how far it's drifting away from our benchmark. So all that kind of functionality we've added into Sentinel. Nice. Well, there was that security platform integration. You can go into your SOC and your seams and your SOARs. Yeah, uh, as well. Can you pull in various parts or that integration is relatively fixed? No, it's actually incredibly flexible, um, to right. be honest. Um, so, you know, it's, again, massively complicated uh, when you start talking about automation and SOAR and all those kind of products, it's, the conversation kind of blows up uh, slightly. But yeah, uh, you know, our platform is, is incredibly uh, extensible and very, very flexible in terms of how it can be integrated. Nice. What's the roadmap? Uh, maybe sort of the highlights for 2023. What's something that we should be looking out for? I think, you know, uh, in my three years at Tanium, I think the the, the amount of uh, development that's gone on, the amount of new modules that we've, that we've brought on has been quite extraordinary. I mean, just some simple things that customers struggle with, uh, like their software supply chain. You know, going back at the end of 21, if you remember, there was that Log4j uh, yeah. you know, vulnerability that was discovered. Now, the trouble with that kind of vulnerability is it's deeply embedded within applications. So you can't instantly say, I don't have Log4j because it's actually a library which is compiled and built into an application you're running. So just a, a simple thing about software supply chain, how do you know when you've got things embedded in your application space? So we brought out a thing called SBOM, um, a software bill of materials. So we actually unpack uh, you know, the, 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 the software supply chain, if you like, and right. show you what you've got those pieces in there. So I look... I, to answer your question, I think there are lots of things around that kind of, those kind of issues that our customers really struggle with. And so you can see those being built on over the, over the next year. Um, and, you know, we're very um, reactive to what our customers say. So when they say they're having a problem in a certain area, we'll look to see how we can solve that for them. Well, we talked about visibility. I think that's the key one. I've heard that for so long now when I look yeah. back 
uh, visibility has always been the sort of the, the, the key aspect uh, yeah. to, to protect. You have to understand what you're protecting in the first place. So when you can really drill down to a granular level, as you say, un even unpack down into what software is in the application yeah. uh, uh, across thousands and thousands of endpoints, uh, it's really uh, very, very clever. And uh, it's obviously a great platform. Um, if to, shine, to find out more, it's tanium.com. It's well having worth having a look, even at the modern uh, architecture approach uh, that it's got here, the converged uh, endpoint management platform. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you so, so much for that. James Silence, Vice President, Technical Account Management, South Asia. We didn't really get into your role either, mate, in terms of oh, well, uh, the, the customer uh, engagement, but uh, you're definitely one to reach out to uh, yeah. in South Asia region. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm always happy to direct traffic. So wonderful. Thanks, James. Thanks for joining us on our MySec TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Chris.